every year, there are well over a hundred breaks in the world chain of submarine telephone cables. Thousands of calls are cut off. Important data can be delayed or lost in the confusion. Yeah, operator. Ich habe eben mit Chicago gesprochen. Ich bin aber unterbrochen worden. Mira, es que tengo un problema inmenso aquí. New York and all. A single break in the international chain can affect calls and callers all over the world. You're a nonsense, William. Bami soye. One of the key tasks of the International Cable Protection Committee, the ICPC, is to try to reduce the incidence of breaks like these. Submarine cables are still the principal means of telephone conversation across the world, and they're likely to remain so. Cables are private, secure, and consistent. They have a long life expectancy. Other means of communication are important, but essentially they're complementary to cables. They can't replace them. Satellites, for example, and high-frequency radio, Cable owners realize that they aren't the only users of the seabed. Ships need to anchor. Gravel must be dredged. Fish and other seafood have to be caught. Oil and gas must be sought for and exploited. To ensure that all these requirements can be met, users of the seabed must cooperate. It can be done. The North Sea shows how different activities can exist together. But offshore industry is in its infancy. More and more cooperation will be needed. How are the cable operators helping? First, each new cable route is precisely surveyed. The survey finds not only a good line for the cable lay, but also how best to avoid other users of the sea. The cable route is plotted and followed as precisely as possible. Nearly all navigation charts now show the routes of cables. ICPC have encouraged the issue of special cable warning charts. During manufacture, cables can be armored. During laying, special ducting can be clamped around them. But even these precautions can't guarantee that cables are breakproof. So, increasingly, cables are being buried. Many of the techniques developed involve the use of specially designed submersible vehicles. These must operate unmanned on the seabed far beneath the control ship. But not all cables can be buried, so other ways of protecting them are being developed. Here in the United States, clam dredgers are being equipped with special warning systems. These tell the skipper, visibly and audibly, when he's getting too near to a cable, so that he can take avoiding action. But cables are still caught and broken. Cable ships are stationed around the world to sail at immediate notice to repair broken cables. The precise position of the damage must be established. Then the ship must try to grapple for the cable. Cable hook, aye aye. Once on board, the damaged section of the cable must be cut out. The cable must be re-spliced and tested back. Only then can the cable be re-armored and placed back under the sea. It's a costly business. Eventually, all of us share the cost and the inconvenience. A responsible skipper will sooner cut his gear than cut a cable. For, like all of us, he relies on his communications. They're just as vital as fish from the sea or oil from beneath it. We all share the benefits of each other's toil. We must share the responsibilities. We must share the seabed. Every year, there are well over a hundred breaks in the world chain of...